Nam Wyatt, we are all one. I just come from the Truth and Reconciliation Tour in Vancouver, British Columbia, September 2013. I'm Michelle Titler and I'm from the political organization End Race Based Law. You can find us on Facebook, although we're also on the internet. I had an absolutely amazing time. This is one of the t-shirts from the TRC, Truth and Reconciliation Tour. This is the back. This represents the this shape of the TRC logo. The flames sustain life in the circle and provide safety and sustenance. Most importantly, the flames shed light on what needs to be shared in the circle, the experiences of those affected by Indian residential schools. The seven flames that make up the circle represent the seven sacred teachings, love, respect, courage, honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission draws on each of those teachings in the work of truth gathering, truth telling, reconciliation, and each TRC national event is dedicated to one of them. The British Columbia national event is dedicated to the sacred teachings of honesty. It was an absolutely amazing event. Too bad for anybody who didn't get a chance to make it out. Uh, school kids went, uh, UBC closed. It was just, it was an outstanding event. It was so well organized, so well planned out and thought out. Uh, quite clearly a tremendous amount of money had gone into it too because it was, it was extensive. And so worth it. Absolutely what should have happened. And I wish everybody had been there, really. It was that important. Um, it is a part of our Canadian history and um, these people really uh, did did suffer some losses and damages uh, through the, the Indian residential schools. Um, I, I felt really privileged to be a part of it. I had my hanky in my pocket at all times because it was a tearjerker listening to the stories and uh, they had displays on where you could read the progression um, year by year of, uh, you know, the churches being involved and, and just, just basically the history of the residential schools, really informative. Um, the churches also had displays set up, and it was incredible how much they had archived. They had photo albums of all the native kids. It was absolutely wonderful. I went through all the books. Uh, each of the churches had a big display up uh, that showed the pictures of the churches, uh, the kids, the nuns, and they also had formal apologies. Uh, they had healing circles where Aboriginal leaders and speakers and members, um, leaders from the churches, could, they could all talk and share and the churches could apologize um, to individual people. Um, and then of course in the Agrodome there was the big, uh, it was really brave of those people. I want to thank all the people that got up there and told their stories in front of the world. It was webcast and um, the auditorium was packed most of the time. It just took a lot of courage to get up there and do that. And you could see the healing that was going on as they were sharing. That's a really important thing for any person. It doesn't matter what religion, race, uh, or nationality or culture you come from. Uh, when you've suffered some trauma or some abuse, um, it's just, it's, it's incredibly uh, healing to share your story and to have people validate you and, um, and help you out, uh, support you. Uh, you, you, it was, it was just, a, it was a remarkable experience. I, I went, I, I went up to strangers and talked to strangers. I sat around the uh, sacred fire and uh, had a lot of fun with some people that I'd never met before. I went there for two days, and it really took two days to absorb everything that was going on. And I'm going to say again, it was incredibly important for everyone, for the residential uh, school survivors, and for Canada to, for everyone to acknowledge that this was a bleak part in our history. Mistakes were made. There was a lot of good that came out of the residential school as well. We posted many stories on our um, Facebook page, any race based Law. Uh, there were good stories. It's that for the people that were damaged, um, they really needed some uh, healing. And that's what this was about. Uh, the word reconciliation, I looked it up even though I know what it means, I looked it up. And one of the definitions I found was restoring mutual respect between individuals from different cultural backgrounds. The re-establishing of cordial relations. Harmonizing, balancing, accommodation, resolving, compromise, remedying, rectifying. Now, the most important one that I thought was interesting was restoring mutual respect between individuals from different cultural backgrounds. This Truth and Reconciliation Tour is, is mostly for the Aboriginals to heal 
from the damages that were done and the loss of their culture, that kind of thing. But it's also to reestablish, to reconcile with the people of Canada and with our country as a whole. And um, I'm really hoping that that happens from this because during my time on NRA-based law, we started up when Isle No More got going. Um, we didn't find any kind of reconciliation coming in from the Aboriginals. In fact, what we experienced was enormous abuse, the likes of which I've never seen before anywhere in this country. Racism, the likes of which I've never heard before in all of North America. And one of the things that we Canadians uh, want to share with you now, this is now my truth and my voice and our voices. I represent this organization and I've heard from many, many Canadians across the country um, and we have voices too. And our voices are not being heard in any of this. Uh, we recognize that healing has to be done for the residential school experience, but we also know that um, innocent taxpayers are being pummeled uh, by the Aboriginals. Court case after court case after court case, and it never gets better. Uh, we're hoping that once this reconciliation, truth reconciliation tour ends, that there really will be reconciliation. And many of us are very skeptical about that because it seems as though this has also got a secondary agenda attached to it, and that's your political agenda to uh, bully our country. And I'm going to use the word bully because in all my life I've never seen such bullying as we saw during Idle No More. And I want to tell you what it's like to have a, um, a page on Facebook and have people come onto your page whom you've never met before. They don't know you, you don't know them, and they come and scream in capital letters, you raped and murdered our children. We got that by the thousands. Kids who are 20 years old telling us that we raped and murdered their children. This is part of our voice when we say we need that reconciliation from you. You need to get in there to your communities and aside from doing the personal healing that's going on, also recommend to people that the average Canadian did not indeed rape or murder any of their children. But that's the dialogue we're hearing. I loved that event so much. I was so impressed by all of it, all the way up until the end when you, Chief Wilton Littlechild, did your little speech, you wrecked the whole thing for me. Remember me, I walked up beside you during the procession as you were all walking out, and I said to you that Canadians lost something too, because you were up there talking. My camera happened to have lost, uh, the batteries just went dead. Just as you started your speech, I got a bit of it, uh, but I didn't get all of it, so I have to just go by memory. And I will tell you, you made me mad enough that I stopped even listening to you at a certain point. Um, and it was the part where, well, first of all, you were saying thank you to uh, the sponsors. And one of the sponsors was Kinder Morgan, the pipeline people. And the audience booed. And you didn't do anything about that. These people were giving you money. And you just let that go on. I realize you can't control the audience, but you certainly seem to think so about everything else, didn't you? You were inciting hate against Canada. And I'm going to say it just like it is. You stood up there so arrogantly as though the residential school experience now gave you the right to say, okay, Canada, now we're going to tell you what to do. You see, we're so strong and resilient, now we're going to tell you what to do. And that's exactly what's happening with the pipeline. I didn't like your attitude. I loved everybody was, that was there. It was such a great, I met, I made friends. I exchanged phone numbers with people. I talked to so many people, it was incredible. Any of you watching this video who saw me there, you all remember me there because I walked around that much and talked to that many people. It was awesome. It was a great experience and I'm so glad we did it. I really do wish healing for the people that went through those experiences. I myself have been through enough abuse in my life that I know that those healing circles and that kind of sharing and that kind of honesty is critical to moving on and to getting over those kinds of things. I've said in one of my other videos, get over it, but you have to do the work to be able to get over it. And I saw some women giving their testimonials. How brave was that in front of the whole world on webcast? There were private testimonials that went on too, but for the women that, and men that got up and did it in front of everybody, I just have so much heart and respect for you. You made me cry my eyes out. It was harsh. It was a very emotional two days. Uh, I was with you all the way. I, I just think this is one of the most important events that Canada could have done when, regarding this issue. And that means it does have to bring. 
You guys have to make a commitment now. What, Canada committed to this uh, Truth and Reconciliation Tour and I heard politicians get up there and make commitments to you and now I want you to make commitments to us that there will be reconciliation because we haven't seen it at all. All we've seen is the blame game, the extortion has been absolutely outstanding and you, Chief Wilton Little Child said in your little speech, big speech, what did Canada lose? We lost our culture. What did Canada lose? We lost our language. What did Canada lose? You just kept saying that over and over again and you listed things after the and that's what I came up to you for. Well, you know what? I don't know who you think you're talking to, but every single one of us here came from somewhere else and we lost our language and culture. Huh? Like, how can you not know that? I don't have any connection to my Ukrainian, Austrian, French, there's a, there's a, I'm, a, I'm a big mix. I'm a lot of different races and cultures. I don't have any connection to them. My only connection is Canada. And when you have natives, we, when we, not you, you never get this, we do. We heard it over and over and over again. I had to make videos for the Human Rights Commission. It was such a severe amount of abuse that Canadians took during I don't know more. We had natives consistently saying, you're on stolen land, go home. We had one girl say, go home, Jew because we know how you've been hanging out with the Palestinians at the United Nations and that anti-Semitism has definitely leaked into your culture. We heard that a number of times. Um, that's not reconciliation. That's not doing your part in reconciliation. I am now challenging you. Uh, this is, I only have this video. I don't have uh, millions of dollars behind me uh, to help us get you to understand what our voices are because our voices aren't heard at all in this. We've got politicians acquiescing, bending over everywhere because of the residential school thing. Everybody feels badly. We're all, we all feel badly that you had to go through that. Um, except now you're using that as a political agenda too. That's not okay. This Truth and Reconciliation Tour has to be only about healing. Only about healing and reconciliation. And your part of the reconciliation is not only forgiveness, but you need to get into all of your communities. The way that you gathered people around to get them to talk about the residential schools, you need to now gather them all around and talk about their racism. I've never seen that kind of racism in all my life, never heard it. No one in North America would be allowed to get away with the kind of dialogue we heard and still hear from the Aboriginals. No one. They'd be charged. It would just, they would lose. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, because I want to end race-based law, many people do, we want to abolish the Indian Act. I'm sure you may agree with that. But we also want to take out Section 35 of the Constitution, which gives you special rights. That's racism. And because we want to, to do that, I get called a racist. I get called the biggest racist in all of Canada. You want to know the abuse that I've been through from the Aboriginals? Staggering. There's a police investigation going on right now for criminal harassment. That's how severe it's been. I've never seen anything. I've never seen that kind of dialogue. I mean, you guys have abuse issues. They're real. And they don't just come from the uh, residential schools. They also come from your own cultures. The nuns recorded an incest problem when they first arrived in Canada or on this land. It wasn't called Canada yet. And I want to know why, if you can talk about the sexual abuse and the abuse from the residential schools, why you can't talk about the abuse from your own people that you've committed against each other. You can't just keep using the residential schools to blame, 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 blame. It's not a good enough excuse. And now you're using them to bully our country. At the very end of the speeches when you were um, mentioning all of the sponsors, you mentioned Kinder Morgan, the pipeline people, and everybody booed. You realize that oil comes to you through those pipelines. Millions of miles of pipelines run all across North America, none of which you helped build. And which you're using that oil. You've got SUVs and look at Chief Spence and her uh, Escalade. Uh, I'll be going to tell you, that I found that was about the time at which I stopped listening to you. I was so pissed off with the way that went down. You didn't stop that, you didn't say anything about that. You actually started bragging about how you were all standing up now and you're gonna be really big and strong and you're gonna tell Canada what to do. Well, you know what, you're not going to. We voted for a democratically elected government, a majority government, and you are not it. And just because you had to go to residential schools doesn't mean you could start to bully our country now. That's not the way it's gonna work. That industry, that's our way of life, our culture, it's also the tax dollars that we give you to sit around waiting for you to heal from the residential schools. 
we saw you get active to be able to get up and protest during I don't know more. Well, we want to see you get active to hold your own leaders accountable the same way you held Canada accountable. And Chief Littlechild, you also said your leaders were doing a great job. Not true. Your leaders are doing a terrible job. That's quite apparent. Um, the racism is unbelievable. The corruption is incredible. The greed is absolutely staggering. People living in squalor after innocent, innocent taxpayers have paid tremendous amounts of money to keep you guys going and nothing's working. This, this, tour, uh, this tour has to be the beginning of the end of the blame game and it has to represent you're getting into your communities and doing the proper ther therapy that you need. There was one woman who got up there. She was my hero. Instead of blaming, she got up there and said that she was responsible for her inner, inner child. She was responsible for the anger. She even called herself, she was so cute, she said, I'm going to swear, I was an asshole. She talked about how she couldn't um, give love properly, how she had rage and anger and abuse and substance abuse issues. She took full accountability for her life and for her abuses and for her addictions. She was outstanding. She, she just was really the belle of the ball in every way. Um, she knew where it was at. And I want to suggest to you that even though we all know there were some great stories that came out of the residential schools, we posted some of those stories. None of those people were allowed to be part of the Truth and Reconciliation Tour. We know that too. We know that only the people who had bad stories were allowed to be part of this tour. We understand that's biased. We also understand that the residential schools didn't work for the Aboriginals, but really, you know, you know that people were just, they really thought they were doing the right thing and you have to take that into consideration. They did think that they were doing the right thing. Would it have been better? I think we all have to ask ourselves that. Would it have been better if the Aboriginals didn't get any schooling at all? If the residential schools never happened and every one of those bands, which are tribes, um, were left alone, where would they be now? There's no real telling, is there? Because booze was still introduced and you do have a biological DNA predisposition to alcoholism. I do too. Many of us do. It's just one of those things that you get or you don't get. No one's to blame for that. And yet we hear that over and over again too online. It's unbelievable, the blame. The blame is so endemic in your culture, it's outstanding. We need, us Canadians need, to hear you say that this reconciliation goes both ways. Because let's not forget, restoring mutual respect between individuals from different cultural backgrounds. We have yet to see the Aboriginals truly respect Canada, our laws, our people, our ways, our culture. We were so abused during I don't know more. I just, I can't even begin to tell you. I'm not gonna go into it. This, it, it, it's, it, it's, it was so sickening and twisted, it's still going on. I don't know what right you people think you have to attack um, people who want to talk about politics in this country, but we want to end race-based law. And that doesn't give, the residential schools does not give you the right to attack people and call anybody who wants to talk about this issue a racist. I've been called a racist a million times. We saw the Aboriginals by the thousands call anybody who didn't acquiesce to the blame game a racist. You've just taken to calling everybody a racist. And guess what? You know what else you explained to me, Chief Little Child? This, we are all one. I was so proud when I first saw this because I thought that it was similar to what I say on my page, which is we're all in this together. But no, you clarified at the end during your speech that it means you, you people, the Aboriginals, not we, Canada, not we are all one. You made it very clear that this was about just the Aboriginals. That disappointed me to the end. I felt sucked in and betrayed by the whole thing. I felt as though the Truth and Reconciliation Tour was really about just pumping more guilt into Canadians. Like you wrecked everything. You, you wrecked everything. You tainted it with that. You tainted it with your speech at the end. Those happy birthday party songs were fantastic. I didn't know that the residential schools did not allow the kids to have birthdays. I thought that was one of the best ideas of the whole event. Singing happy birthday in all of the different languages. Oh, I laughed, I cried, I smiled. I videotaped that before my battery ran out. But by the time I got to your speech, my battery ran out and I'm sorry uh, because I would love to have picked it apart. It was that, uh, um, I found it that offensive. I was offended by your racism. And you stirred up that audience and you got them, to, you incited hate. You incited hate against Canada. You kept referring to Canada as though it was this entity, this enemy. Um, we're just people. 
People make mistakes, you guys make mistakes too, lots of them. The difference is you're never held accountable. And when we do try to hold you accountable, you call us racists. That has to stop. You guys need to get into your communities and with this healing, also begin to teach your people that we are just human beings. And on top of that, we're tax-paying human beings. And now you're trying to interfere with the pipeline, the very oil that you use. So I'm gonna challenge you now, all of you, to stop using oil. That is the only way that you can do this. If you don't want to use oil, you need to stop using oil and that's gotta be your protest. You can't get up and start telling our industry, our country, our people, these are our jobs. This is the way that we make money. How you make money is through the blame game. But how we make money is to go to work and work hard in this country. Millions and millions and millions of people built this country. The very tax dollars that you get um, is from those people who worked hard. You know, my Baba worked until she died. She literally worked herself to death. My husband, Jerry Gagnon, his mother's mother, worked herself to death. The immigrants that came here had extremely strong work ethics. And you are just acting as though those tax dollars, they come from the sky. They just fall from the sky. And these are real people. We've got single mothers out here who don't have the benefits that the Aboriginals do now. Can't get free dental, can't get free uh, education. The, the, we hear from people, the, people all across this country. We hear from fishermen, from hunters. These laws have to stop. We need for you to listen to our voices too now. We're angry too. We've been abused by you too. You've abused these laws to the point where 42% of our tax dollars go to you. We're losing our healthcare system and yet you guys, are, you guys have greedy chiefs who are driving Escalades, traveling to UN uh, meetings, um, uh, bad mouth in Canada. It was just school. It was just school. And it may not have been ideal, but I'm not responsible for one nun's actions. I'm not responsible for one priest's actions. And even though the idea was to get you to assimilate, I don't know why that's such a dirty word. The whole world has to assimilate as time goes on and cultures morph and change all the time. People migrate. Do you know what it's like to have natives come to your page and say, get off our land? We all land here. So this is what we're asking of you. You got Canada involved in this Truth and Reconciliation Tour, so let's all get involved, everybody, all of Canada, and let's ask you to get on as on board as we are. We have felt for you. We have compassion for you. We care about you. Now you gotta care about us, because so far we haven't seen you care about us at all. In fact, it's been so much hate, abuse, and racism, and bullying, uh, once again, staggering. So, your part in this is to stop that arrogant, superiority, racist bullying. You know, you talk about being oppressed and all that kind of stuff. Well, you oppress your own people. You bully your own people. Your chiefs keep their own people on those reserves so that they can get the money. You need to deal with your own issues. Canada is evolving. We're, we're a nation of people that are learning as we go along. That's what all human beings do. We're part of the human race here. We have way too many races in this cult country to have one race dominate. Stop calling it white privilege when it's not white privilege, it's Aboriginal privilege. Nobody else gets special laws in this country. We have to have equal laws. And you can't just call somebody who wants to end race-based law a racist, and that's what you do. Any Canadian that does not acquiesce and bend over, you call them a racist. Over and over, it's a standard thing. And if that doesn't work, you go blah, 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 residential school, blah, 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 residential school. Not good enough anymore. Do the work, do the healing, get the therapy, take accountability, own your own stuff. And please remember that for any of you that have been abusive, substance abuse, um, perpetrated abuse against other people, how do you know what those nuns didn't go through when they were children? Did it ever occur to you that they may have come from abusive families? From a father who drank too much and they ran to the monastery, they ran to the church to find some kind of salvation? They didn't have children themselves. Maybe they didn't know how to raise children. Same as you, losing your uh, children and then losing your parenting skills. Same with the priests and same with the nuns. If we can all have compassion and understanding for you and what you've gone through, then maybe you need to look a little deeper to the root causes of those nuns. And to also remember that times change as, they, as the years go on and we learn as we go on. Corporal punishment was acceptable when I was growing up. Nobody's, nobody's kid got taken away because they got spanked. 
And now you can't touch your kids. So you got to give Canada credit and you got to say thank you as well as just blaming. It can't just all be blame. And you have to think very, very, very hard about what your lives would really be like had the rest of the world gone on into this modern 21st century and you had stayed stuck where you were. Many of you are still stuck. How do we emancipate you without you crying assimilation? And what's wrong with assimilating with the other cultures that are going on around you and integrating? What's wrong with that? The rest of us do it. I don't have any attachment to my, my past. It would be nice, I'd like to, but I don't. And you guys, you have the luck of the draw in that you weren't displaced. You really do still have this land uh, to share. When you say this, that we're on stolen land, first of all, let's get one thing clear. Nobody stole the land, the land is still here. That's just your racism talking. And I want to make it a human rights commission, I want to make it a hate speech that you talk to Canadians that way. We are not on stolen land. This is our home. Our ancestors are buried here too. And part of your reconciliation, your part in this, is to stop talking to Canadians that way, to stop calling them genocidal murderers, and to get a new dialogue. What would you be tomorrow if you woke up and you weren't victims? Is it possible that one day you won't be victims? Or are you just going to find more and more and more and more stuff? It's gone to the point where Canadians make jokes about it. It's just the blame game is so endemic. Uh, it's all we expect. We never expect accountability from you people. And that's what we're now challenging you and we're asking you to do. Feel sorry for the innocent taxpayers that have, have lost out because of uh, this issue that don't get free university, that don't get free dental, that also had to go to school, were forced, we were also all forced under these Canadian laws. We somehow understand that law is to protect everyone. And the lawlessness we have seen has just been outstanding. Absolutely outstanding from the Aboriginal community. 70% of the women in our jails are, are Native. 50% are uh, Native men. 70% women, 50% men. That's the attitude. That's the attitude of lawlessness that you don't have to follow Canadian law. Why? Blah, 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 residential schools. That's not good enough anymore. I really hope that the people who were damaged by the residential schools learn to find peace, acceptance, resolve, and forgiveness. But you know, if you go to an AA meeting, you're going to find people from all different races and cultures who've also been abused, who also have issues, and they too have to do the work. It's not just you, you're not special and you're not unique. That's what you need to know. You're not special and you're not unique. Stuff happens to everyone. We all have things to overcome. And you have to stop talking to Canadians as though we, uh, we're somehow, um, well that whole privilege thing is unbelievable. It's such an insult to us and it never occurs to you your racism and how it hurts and wounds and offends us. Um, Chief little child, you have to stop talking. The next time you go to the Edmonton, the Edmonton tour, you can't say that at the end. You cannot say, what did Canada lose? You can't say that. Quite clearly, we lost our dignity too in those residential schools. Oh, we lost the investment too, didn't we? It wasn't really worth it now that you talk about it that way. Um, and so why are you still taking our education system? Why are we giving money to your education system? Because we care because education is important. And that's what people were really ultimately trying to do is educate you. And that's what we're still trying to do. Those tax dollars are still going into job training and education. And so while you're crapping on us on one hand, you're also taking the money for education on the other. And I want to remind you one more time, individuals are responsible for abusing individuals. And your individuals uh, are responsible for abusing other people too. It's time for you to start taking accountability for your issues. Um, this residential school thing is not carte blanche to abuse Canadians, to extort from us and to keep blaming us and to bully us. You can't bully us. You can't bully Canada. We voted for our government and, and it's, just, it's just not okay that you start. This would Chief, um, Chief Stuart Phillip encouraging Canadians to take to the streets to stop the pipelines. No, he needs to encourage his people to stop using oil. That's the way it is. Stop using oil. Ran out of videotape there, I had to start it over again. So this is the end of this. The next time you go to Edmonton, and I'm sorry you didn't get this 
advice from me in the very beginning because you could have done better all the way along. Um, next time you say we're all one, you need to include all Canadians. That's what you're going to do in Edmonton. And you're not going to go on about what did Canada lose. Because we built this country. We built this country. You didn't. We did. So come on along, help us build it. Um, stop taking taxpayer money and then calling us all racist because we want to talk about this issue. Those are the things you can work on. You can do better. Uh, you can start by accepting the people that live here and uh, forgiving the residential school. Uh, experience. Uh, those were individual people that did that to you and for the people that made a mistake and tried to take away your culture, well they made a mistake, okay? And you're building your culture now and it was really fantastic to see uh, that part of it this weekend. That was really fun to see the resilience, the energy, uh, the positivity. Um, I wish you all well, I really do. I wish every person on the globe well when it comes to healing from abuse. Because we can do damage to each other. In fact, I've got natives that never stop trying to damage me on a daily basis and I'd really love an apology from the Assembly of First Nations. From the whole Assembly, I'd like a formal apology for the way that your people have treated me. And other Canadians. It's been abominable. I can assure you, no nun ever spoke to you the way that these native stalker gangs have spoken to me. No question about it. It's not even in their religion to be able to talk the way that I've been spoken to. And it's such, such sick stuff, I can't even tell you what it is. It's just that sick. But I can guarantee you, none of the stories I heard come close to what the Aboriginal stalker gangs have been doing to me. So, your truth and reconciliation part is to apologize to me, to apologize to Canada, and to stop taking our taxpayer dollar and shitting on us and calling us all racist and telling us to go home Jew. That's it.